Okay, so uh, yesterday we um, explored a couple of meditations that uh, had the intention of helping to clarify the distinction between uh, Chitta and Chitasaka. So today I want to focus on another aspect of the mind. The, the uh, quality of Chitta um, can be analyzed in different ways. In the Abhidhamma, they have the Abhidhamma texts characterize 89 kinds or aspects of Chitta. It's subdivided in various different ways. One of the ways of dividing it is into four uh, levels or planes of consciousness. Uh, beginning with the, at the lower end, the uh, plane of sense-desire consciousness, then the second plane is the plane of form, then the formless plane, then the unconditioned nibbana. Um, <clears throat> These correspond to, uh, in two ways, they correspond to uh, states that can be accessed um, by us as human beings in states of meditation. We can access these different uh, levels of consciousness. They also correspond to planes of existence, planes of uh, potential rebirth, at least the first three, Nibbana is outside of the whole uh, cycle of, of death and rebirth. Now this uh, lowest level, level of sense desire, is the default mode of consciousness for human beings, animals, uh, ghosts, uh, hell beings, and um, and Dewas. So it's the most variable, uh, the most complicated of the levels. There's the uh, more complex stuff going on. There's more variation within this level. It's characterized by the beings in this level uh, and uh, as humans, when we're mostly relating through this level, we experience the world through the five senses, the five physical senses. And most of our um, desires, thoughts, fears, emotions are related to sense objects. And so our primary motivating factor for beings in this level is to try and maximize pleasant sense experience and minimize unpleasant or painful sense experience. Um, <clears throat> and we're caught up in this, uh, in this level most of the time. But it is possible to experience the higher levels of consciousness, which are more uh, more uh, subtle, more purified, less less complex. In a sense, it's it's returning to a more basic or primordial state of mind. You're shedding a whole level of complication. You're getting to a, a more integral, underlying aspect of the mind. So, um, the way we do this is through uh, development of samadhi. And we touched on the topic of jhanas a little bit yesterday in the Q&A. Is that samadhi is in moving the mind towards uh, immersion in jhana, which is the mind that's completely still and focused. And some of you may have... Um, uh, read or heard 
both the jhana and the four jhanas and the theory of jhana with the jhana factors and so on. This, I want to focus on a different aspect, um, the aspect of jhana as a, a phase shift of consciousness, a transition out of the sense-desire realm into the realm of form. So you are experiencing an entirely different modality of consciousness. Samatha meditation, which is the route to that, is uh, different from Vipassana meditation. It's a, uh, a different approach in that we're not trying to investigate objects, we're trying to stabilize the mind. So you begin with an arbitrarily chosen object, point of focus, very commonly used in our tradition is the breath, although there are other um, other ways of doing this. But the point is, you have a, an object that you've taken to be your your object of meditation. If you're using the breath, uh, you're focusing on the physical sense of touch at the nostrils, and trying to uh, fill your consciousness with that sense of, of touch of the breath moving in and out. And when other things arise to the mind, whether they're thoughts or emotions or physical sensations elsewhere in the body or sounds, it's different than Vipassana. Now you have to learn the art of disregarding, of non-attention. You, you disregard these objects. You don't go out to them. You continue to fill the mind with the breath again and again, continually. <clears throat> uh, it's a uh, common mistake is to try and force the mind onto the breath. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, you get it works only for a short while, then you get tired and it all falls apart. Uh, you try and make the mind. Uh, alert, bright, clear, expansive, and uh, but receptive and passive. It's receiving that physical impulse of the breath. It's, uh, you're trying to think of it as filling the mind with the breath, rather than putting the mind on the breath. You're not trying to get a narrow mind. You're not trying to narrow the mind by exclusion. You're trying to uh, fill the mind uh, a vast, expansive mind with the breath to such a degree that everything else is is uh, subsides out of it because all the attention is on the breath. The definition of samadhi in the uh, in the text is non-wavering or stillness, stability. It's often, you'll see in books, if you read about this, you'll see the common translation is concentration. I uh, think that's quite wrong. I don't like that translation at all. It's one of those ones that's become uh, historically kind of pegged to the Pali word because it's an early translation that just got uh, established. But I think it has the wrong connotation. It has a sense of narrowing, right? Um, is the the mind in uh, in jhana, as I said uh, um, before, is is equivalent to uh, the uh, being born in, in in that equivalent level uh, is a brahma god, and the brahma gods are beyond sensuality, and they have. Um, a vast expanse of consciousness. It's said that one one Brahma God can survey thousands of world systems like a man holding a handful of sesame seeds. And these are beings that are beyond sensual realm. So there's no no gender there. There there's neither male nor female. They're all just reckoned as beings. They don't eat ordinary food, they feed on bliss. So that um, these are 
uh, point, a point, this is a point refined level of consciousness. So thinking about movement towards jhana as a movement into the analog state of a Brahma god, you're, you're trying to shed this, anything to do with the coarse biological, the gross biological level. You know, the Brahma gods are beyond all that. None of this smelly, stinky stuff of you know, <laughs> human, human biology. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So, uh, what I would suggest that you do when you're practicing this uh, Samatha meditation this morning, trying to stabilize the consciousness on the breath, is to notice whenever the mind is falling back into sense consciousness level, and don't feed that, don't give that any tolerance or any rope, just you know, disregard it. Don't don't give it any any chance to gain gain a, a hold in the mind. You know? And we're not just talking about uh, no please, no let me let me speak. Uh, we're not just talking about coarse um, coarse manifestations of sensuality but it's going out through the senses. Like if you <coughs> are becoming, you know, if the mind is becoming um, in, engaged in uh, feeling uh, uncomfortable, that uh, your legs hurt or, or you're too hot or you're too cold, that's sense desire realm stuff. You're relating to, to the world through the senses. You're not transcending the sense experience. So you have this, you're just allowing this one. Uh, one sense object, which in this case is the sense of touch at the nose tip. You try to stabilize on that and disregard everything else. And allow the mind to uh, disengage <coughs> from uh, sensory experience as far as you can. And sensory obsession, sensory thought, and so on. Um, And uh, what you what we're doing in this, uh, one of the benefits of this, the further you can get towards that, the more disengaged from the sensual experience you can get temporarily. And, um, it's like shedding a whole level of samsara. It's like a whole. It's like not. It doesn't make an end. It's not the unconditioned, but it has simplified the problem of samsara. You've taken the whole big chunk of it and dropped it for the time being. So that the mind becomes simpler, more purified, clear, uh, more subtle, lighter, more expansive. Yeah. So the, uh, that's a, a bit about the, um, the theory of moving towards the realm of form. And... Uh, using samadhi meditation. Now I'll give some uh, instructions in brief on the way of doing samadhi meditation. And uh, I would, uh, I'm going to speak about using the breath. There's other, there's other options, but the breath is, is a uh, one a meditation is said to be suitable for all, all persons. Uh, um, some people can do casino meditation. Some people can. But everybody has a. Everybody breathes. Everybody's got an option to, to use this, um, this meditation. So you sit comfortably, and uh, don't. A, a couple of things is uh, bear in mind. One is this is not like breath yoga, if some of you have done pranayama, this is not that, it's a different thing altogether, so you're not, you've got to not control the breath, this is quite important, just let the body breathe, you're not manipulating the breath. A small exception to that is when you first begin the, the, the session, you can take three or four deep breaths if it helps to 
calm and stabilize the body. But then let go of control of the breath altogether. Don't manipulate the breath. Just watch it. And it's not even watch it, it's feel it. Feel the sensation <coughs> at, the, at the nose tip. And let the breath come to you. Right? Don't try and push the mind onto the breath. Try and fill the mind with the breath. And anything else which arises to the mind, allow it to settle by disregarding it. Don't fight with anything, any mind states or uh, obsessions that arise in the mind. Just disregard them. Let them fade away in the background. Um, you can think of an, an analogy, it's like if you were reading a book in one room and uh, your partner or your roommate is in the other room watching TV. Uh, you can hear the TV, but you're disregarding it. You're not paying attention to it. And the more you focus on your, your book, the less you hear the TV. So um, we're, we're trying to uh, fill the mind with the breath to, to reach the point where there's only the breath in consciousness. Um, and uh, if you want to spend part of the time <coughs> walking, then uh, uh, you can continue to watch the breath as you walk. You can just do the same meditation in a different posture. It's a more difficult to become really focused uh, walking, but if you need to have that um, stretch, the body's becoming too troublesome, then we can do that. And try and um, synchronize the footsteps with the breath as much as possible, like two or three steps to a breath. But doing it sitting is easier and uh, um, probably make the more progress faster with this meditation in the sitting posture. <coughs> 